This is November 13th, 1995, history class for 5th through 8th. Are all the 5th grade here? Teachers, I would like the handout Enoch and his city to be given to them for their notebooks. And also we have another timeline showing the lengths of the lives of those first patriarchs. We had it to the teachers. I'd like the students to have it. So we get those two handouts and all these handouts go in your notebooks. You'll be graded how good you take care of them. Our subject today is Enoch and his city. The prophet Enoch is a prophet we are very interested in because he was given a job to do that has to do with us. He was such a great prophet that he could actually visit heavenly cities. And he was called upon to build a city and teach a people so they would live what we call the United Order. The two greatest laws of the priesthood are celestial and plural marriage and the holy united order. Celestial and plural marriage is marriage by revelation through the prophet. And when that revelation comes, a family is supposed to live the law called the united order. The United Order, I want you to put it in your notes. The United Order is to love God above all and to love your neighbor as yourselves. And you can have them list the first two great commandments there. To love one another means we give everything we have to the priesthood. And then the priesthood makes sure everybody has according to their needs and just wants. There's no selfishness in heaven. And this is what Enoch did. Enoch, through the power of God and priesthood, made a heaven here on earth. Enoch is about the sixth from Adam, and by Enoch's time, just about six generations down, nearly all the people of the world had become wicked. I remind you the land was all connected together at that time, but the area of land where Father Adam lived, or Enoch lived, was on this land, what we call North America. Father Adam was still on the earth, and Father Adam blessed Enoch with the priesthood. A special thing happened when Enoch was 65 years old. The Lord appeared to Enoch, the Lord himself, and blessed Enoch and called him to be a prophet. He was to go among the people and teach repentance, because nearly all the people of the earth had turned away from Heavenly Father. He went forth and taught them, and Uncle Roy tells us, Enoch taught the people faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, repentance, baptism, and laying on of hands for the gift of the Holy Ghost. And then for over 300 years, he taught them how to keep sweet. His people went through many tests and trials. When the Lord saw they were obedient, the Lord would bless them with riches. And the outside people would get angry and come and persecute Enoch. He com 
commanded in the name of God and earthquakes came a land came up out of the water and his enemies were so afraid of Enoch they left and went out and lived on this land when his enemies would come against him he would command in the name of God and the wild beasts would come and scare his enemies earthquakes would come and make the rivers change a direction and all the people were afraid of Enoch but Enoch's mission was to prepare a people who loved one another to where they shared everything the priesthood way in priesthood we know that the Lord owns everything and the priesthood, the prophet, the bishops have the right to tell who should have what and what they should do Enoch took 365 years preparing a people and during that time people came and went and finally after 365 years they were too good to stay here on earth at one time during that 365 years the Lord showed Enoch the history of the world this is recorded in your triple combination in the book called the book of Moses Enoch was shown that the earth was a living thing and he saw that the earth was groaning with great pain he wondered why the earth was groaning and the Lord showed Enoch whenever the people that live on the earth are evil the earth has great pain and there's earthquakes and destructions because the earth is hurting and he said when will the earth rest when will it not have pain anymore here was Enoch the great 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 grandfather of Noah Noah wasn't even born yet and the Lord showed Enoch that the, he would send a prophet named Noah to build an ark he saw that Noah was one of his descendants there Enoch saw that all the wicked would be destroyed by a flood he saw that the few that lived through that would then have children and the whole earth would have people on it again and the Lord showed Enoch that the people would become evil again the earth was groaning again hurting he said to the Lord when will the earth rest the Lord then showed Enoch the days of Jesus Christ how he would suffer on the cross and die how he would be resurrected but still the earth groaned because it was in such pain with the evil people on it he asked again when will the earth rest and will our Lord and Savior ever come back to this earth the Lord then showed him the very last days of the earth our day that the earth would have more evil on it than ever before he asked the Lord when will the earth rest the Lord finally showed Enoch that there would be a great destruction to wipe all the wicked off this land and there would be a priesthood people prepared Enoch saw it he wrote it in a book the prophet Joseph gave that to us he saw that there would be a people that would live the very same laws that he taught his people and Enoch told his people how greatly they desired to be part of that day when the earth would rest Enoch saw there would be a few priesthood people live the same priesthood laws the Lord would destroy all the wicked off this land and then that people 
would have a thousand years of peace. How greatly Enoch wanted to be part of it. And this was 5,000 years ago. He wanted to be part of that day of rest, that millennium, the thousand years of peace. And he asked the Lord if he and his people could be part of that day of peace when great blessings would be on this earth. So great was their faith and their obedience to the prophet. The Lord said to Enoch, Yes, I will change your bodies so they cannot die. I will take you off this earth so that you can have a heaven. And I will bring you back when the earth has its day of rest. So after 365 years, after removing all the rebellious people and all the people that wouldn't keep sweet all the time, when he finally had a united people, the city is described as shining with light. So much of the Spirit of God was there. Now the Lord wasn't through with this earth. He needed this earth to be in a celestial condition where the people would be tested by evil. It wasn't time for this earth to become a heaven. That's why Enoch and his people had to leave. There you see below North America the Gulf of Mexico the body of water down by Florida. That's where his city was located. Now what would have happened if Enoch and his people had stayed here on earth and been a heavenly people? The Lord would have fought their battles and destroyed all the wicked on the whole earth and the earth would have gradually become a heaven. Clear back then, 5,000 years ago. But the Lord did not want it then. So, Instead of the whole earth becoming a heaven, he took the land around the city and lifted it up off the earth and it became its own planet and it is out in space now. When they were lifted up off the earth, all the people, their bodies were changed. We are called telestial people or the devil can tempt us. They had so much of Heavenly Father's Spirit that their bodies were changed from a telestial condition to the next degree of glory called a terrestrial. The word we used is they were translated. When a person is translated, they're still immortal. They haven't died. But the devil has no more power to tempt them or hurt their bodies. You can't kill a translated being. They can appear and disappear from our sight. They just need to say a prayer. And the Lord blesses them with the power to appear or disappear. Enoch and all his people were translated where they would no longer have pain or sorrow. And they didn't need to fear death because they now had the promise that they would live with our Lord and Savior in the last days. The Lord in the scripture says that Enoch and his city were taken to his own bosom. They live where the Savior can live with them. They are mortal people whose bodies have been changed into a more pure condition so the Lord could live with them himself. They are now coming toward this earth. Their planet, their earth is coming toward this earth and they have the promise that their earth will mold together with our earth again. But when will Enoch and his people come back? He saw the whole history of what the world has gone through. He saw you and me. 
He saw President Jeffs would be a great prophet in this day. He was shown, and it's written in the good book, there would be a people who would become like his people. And what are they like? There would be a people on this land who would be so obedient to their prophet, they would be translated and they would become terrestrial beings. You young people were sent here to do this work. Our Enoch today is President Jeffs. And he is teaching us we must live celestial and plural marriage in the spirit of the United Order. Or love one another. The very things that Enoch taught his people, the prophets in our day have taught this people. But why? I'm trying to awaken your minds. Young people, you and I are supposed to prepare to become a city of Enoch, a new Jerusalem, who will meet the city of Enoch that will return. Enoch was shown that when he came back, the city here on this earth that is built, called the New Jerusalem, will actually be lifted up off the earth, and Enoch's city would come down and they would meet, while the earth went through a burning, and then those cities would be set back down. And it says when the people of Enoch meet us, those of us who live the same laws as Enoch did, it says they will be so happy, so joyful, they will fall on each other's necks and kiss each other with tears flowing. And they will be the people that our Lord Jesus Christ will come and visit personally. Where will this city, the New Jerusalem, be built? I pointed it to you. There in Missouri, in the very same place where the Garden of Eden was. This city will be huge, it will be beautiful. It will have a wall all the way around it. It will have twelve gates with the tribe of Israel, the name of each tribe written above it. It will have a beautiful temple. If you've seen the Salt Lake Temple up here, it will be 24 times bigger than that temple. And in that temple, the priest of people, that's us, if we prepare, they will go into the temple and see God. This is what Enoch was shown. This is what all the prophets saw. They saw what this priest of people is supposed to do today. And here we are being taught the very same things that Enoch taught his people. We're told to do the very same work. But there's one difference of our day compared to his. Brigham Young said Enoch had 365 years to unite his people in love. He said in our day it will be done much quicker. I'm going to tell you the order of some things that will take place. You can look at the map. I will describe it to you. The wicked on this land are about to be destroyed. This is the very same land that Enoch lived on. This is the land where the new city called the New Jerusalem, the city of Zion, will be built. This land must be swept clean first. After the great destructions, there will be people in Europe or Africa or Asia. But on this land, everybody's going to be wiped off, except the priesthood people under President Jeffs who have kept sweet, who live as he teaches. They will be lifted up while the judgments and destructions 
wipe the wicked off this land. Then they'll be set down again. The main gathering place for this people is down in Short Creek. We know it as Colorado City. And the people there will gather those of us that survived the destructions. And we will prove to the Lord we love one another and will work together and live the United Order. The United Order, another name for it is the Order of Enoch, the way Enoch and his people lived. When we prove to the Lord we'll live unitedly in love, down in Short Creek, the Lord will appear to the prophets and he will name certain people, men and women, who are worthy to go back to Missouri and build the city called Zion. Not all these people will go back, only those whose name is revealed to the prophet. The prophets who have gone before will go with that Zion's camp, it is called. The march back to Missouri will be led by our Lord and Savior himself. And the people who go back and build that city have to be good enough so that they can see our Lord and Savior. They will build the city and when we finally go to Zion, then another planet is going to crash into this earth. There will be the ten tribes. There will be a great earthquake from their earth crashing here. That will help destroy the wicked. But section 133 in the Doctrine and Covenant says that they will meet the priest of people when we, the priest of people, are in Zion. They will help build the city or other cities and temples and they will come to this prophet President Jeffs and this priest of people to receive their blessings I'm talking of the ten tribes who are on another planet then the priest of people will go out of the city of New Jerusalem throughout all the world the young men will and you will teach the gospel for the last time to the nations of the earth. After all the people that believe are gathered to Zion, then is the time for the appearing of our Lord and Savior in His glory, when the great destruction will take place. And sometime around there, Enoch and his people will return. We don't know the years they'll come back, we don't know all the exact order, but we know that this people must survive the judgments first and go back to Missouri with a Zion's camp and begin building the city and temple. Then the ten tribes will find a priest of people in Zion. They will be part of the priest of people and the prophet will prepare a people to meet Enoch and his city. It will be a glorious, happy day. The wicked nations will still be on the earth for a time. They will come with their great armies to kill us. But the prophet in Zion will command and there will be earthquakes to stop them, diseases, destructions, until all people of the earth finally bow down and every tongue will say they know Jesus is the Christ and has the right to rule. During the millennium the priesthood will rule the whole earth and you are being prepared to help the priesthood do this job. We are being prepared to meet all the peoples that have been led away. So why am I going through this story today? You need to know you were sent here to do this job. To help our prophet by becoming a people that will meet the city of Enoch. 
Don't you want to be part of it, young people? You should. The only ones that will ever see these great blessings are those that want to. And how do you get ready for it? You simply keep sweet no matter what. Whatever test or challenge or trial comes, you love one another, you forgive, you build up one another, and you live the united order in your home, loving each other by keeping sweet. Your home cannot have the television running. You can't go out to movies. You can't want to be the Gentile people. You must come out of the world and be clean. Uncle Roy says in Enix City, whenever there was anybody who said, well, we need to go out and be like the world a little bit, those were the people Enoch cast out, didn't let be among his people. And finally, when he had a people that did everything that one man, the prophet, said, they were a prepared people. We are to do this work quicker than Enoch did. And today is our day to show the Lord we are with the prophet by loving each other. I want you to believe that his earth, his part of the earth, was actually lifted up in the sky and out into space. And this earth has been broken up many times, Enoch being the first one we have recorded. I'm now going to read what the Lord told Enoch about our day. <clears throat> And it came to pass that Enoch saw the days of the coming of the Son of Man in the last days to dwell on the earth in righteousness for the space of a thousand years. But before that day, before the day the earth rests or the thousand years of peace, here's what we face. But before that day, he saw great tribulations among the wicked. And he also saw the sea, that it was troubled, and men's hearts failing them, and looking forth with fear for the judgments of the Almighty God, which should come upon the wicked. He saw the destructions of the wicked in our time. The history of the earth is already written. The Lord already told the prophets, what would happen? We are here to make it happen now. The prophets of old saw there would be a people that would obey President Jeffs. And their children would be the ones that would go and redeem Zion. Whenever you hear the words redeem Zion, that means to go back and build a city and a temple that the Lord himself will live in. Then all the peoples who desire priesthood blessings will come to that place to receive their blessings. There's something I didn't explain to you that you need to know concerning the plan of salvation. After a person is resurrected, they cannot receive priesthood blessings as far as the ordinances are concerned. The Lord said, your marriages have to happen before you get your bodies back. Your blessings of baptism, the endowments, receiving the priesthood, whatever it is, have to be given to people before they get their bodies back. Because once you're resurrected, you're then put in a place that you earned. There is no more marrying and giving of wives or husbands after you come out of the grave. It has to be done before. That is what the work of the millennium will be. All the spirits waiting for their blessings will get their 
baptism and other ordinances during the millennium. I describe to you how it will take place. This is what Enoch and his people wanted to help do. To give the blessings to all the people in the spirit world who deserved it. It will take so much time, it will take a thousand years to do. <clears throat> now I'll read this quote of Uncle Roy that I just explained. Uncle Roy's volume 3, page 1053. The only reason that Enoch was able to perfect a people was simply because he labored hard, long and hard, to cast out of the midst of his people men and women who would entertain in their minds a doubt about the thing that he wanted to accomplish. All you need to do to be removed from this work is to just think what President Jeff says can't be done. If you think it can't be done, you can't be used. And that's what the Lord is doing with this people. He's choosing now who will go forward with a complete faith that what the prophet says can be done. When we get the record, we will find that Enoch had to cast men out because they persisted, they insisted, in leaving people with a doubt in their minds. Teachers were among them who said, that in order to perfect their knowledge of God and who he is and how to become like him, they would have to go out and see what the rest of the world was doing. Then let them judge between the two to see whether they really had a testimony or not. When Enoch found this existed among his people, he would cast them out. Do you see? President Jeff said, the families connected with this school should not be watching television. You who watch TV, you're just like these people among, among Enoch and his people who thought they had to bring the world in so they could see the bad to know it was bad. They had to be cast out if they wouldn't repent and stop that. We are trying to do the same thing that Enoch and his people did. And here we are, right at the right place under our prophet's direction. When he had a body of people that were determined against all odds to follow after Enoch, the Lord said, I will use you, Enoch and his city, as an example. I will take you and your people away because you have been able to perfect your lives. I'm trying to plan in your heart, in your wants, your desire. I desire to visit and see the people of Enoch. It's within your reach. One day you can see Enoch and his people. If you will live for it. But if it's not important to you, you can go down with the wicked. You can just be somebody cast off. But if you want to be part of that people, start keeping sweet no matter what. Obey our prophet and come out of the world and be clean. Be pure. Boys, don't touch the girls and girls, don't touch the boys. Dress the priesthood way. Talk nice. Get close to your parents. Do all the good you know how, and you will start to be part of the people that will meet Enoch in his city. And the thing we're concerned about is, if we're not worthy to meet his city, we won't be worthy to survive the great destructions. Today is our day to be good and clean and pure, and prepare to meet Enoch in his city and all the other peoples that will return. I want you in this class today to believe this. You're not just here taking notes. I'm telling you something that you must want to be part of.
In section 84, this is the song we'll sing when Enoch returns. The Lord gave us the words to a song that we don't have the music to. It says, The Lord hath brought again Zion. Verse 99. The Lord hath redeemed his people Israel according to the election of grace which is brought to pass by the faith and covenant of their fathers. The Lord hath redeemed his people and Satan is bound and time is no longer. The Lord hath gathered all things in one. The Lord hath brought down Zion from above. That's Enoch City. The Lord hath brought up Zion from beneath. The earth hath travailed or suffered and brought forth her strength and truth is established in her bowels. And the heavens have smiled upon her and she is clothed with the glory of her God for he stands in the midst of his people. Glory and honor and power and might be ascribed to our God for he is full of mercy, justice, grace, and truth, and peace for ever and ever. Amen. The prophet John Taylor said these words. Journal 21, page 253. When the time comes that these calamities, these destructions we read of, shall overtake the earth, those that are prepared will have the power of translation as they had in former times and the city, the city of Zion in Missouri will be translated and Zion that is on the earth will rise and the Zion above Enoch city will descend as we are told and we will meet and fall on each other's necks and embrace and kiss each other the Lord is describing a city of Enoch where he could live. And we were sent to this earth to help build a city where the Lord could come and live on this earth. And not only that, the city of Enoch where the Lord is able to live will return here. And there will be one Zion, one heaven, one people under one Lord all gathered on this land that we call America. Be clean. You have the greatest privilege ahead of you. Start to want it and live so you can see the ancient peoples who will return.